Hi everyone, welcome to this BAFTA game live stream from Creative Assembly. My name is Ai, nice to meet you. I'm a lead VFX programmer at Total War, and I'm really excited to deliver this talk to all of you today as a celebration event for a 10 year anniversary of our Total War VFX system. We have joined up with BAFTA Game for this live stream as part of their BAFTA Crew Game program, a network for those currently working in the game industry to have access to BAFTA award-winning talents and nominees. About today's topic, in the next hour or so, we will be taking a look around many topics about Total War VFX system, this including our system design philosophy, and I'm also going to walk you through the history of our VFX rendering pipeline during the last decade, reflecting through many of our Total War game, what kind of technique we use and what the reason behind it. Also, I'm going to share some news about our latest development with you as well. So on the screen, I hope you also in the, see the chat. So please don't hesitate to post your question in the chat as I'll be reading and answering them along with this presentation. And at the end, we're also going to have a short live Q&A. So stay tuned. Well, I hope you're ready. I hope you get a cup of tea. So let's dive in. Let's start from the very, very top level. What is Total War? So, I can say that Total War is one of my favorite game series of all time, um, which I play even before I actually working or joined game industry. This is back in like year 1999. But yeah, well, I do also hope that some of you have heard and played Total War game like I do. Here, Total War is a long time running series of PC strategy game since the year 2000. And what make the game stand out and become famous because Total War offer just a very unique gameplay style combining both real-time strategy and turn-based strategy into one. So we do that, so the player can be fully emerged into the grand strategy gaming world where you can both control real-time tactical and also plan um, your strategy in many different ways. Since our first title, Shogun Total War, there now has been more than 20 Total War games that you can enjoy. I'm sure you can find something you like in our catalog, whether you are a fan of a history title or a fantasy. So, what drive Total War game in terms of graphic? Total War game are running on our own engine called Warscape. And Warscape is a graphic engine that we've been developing in-house. And it's been using since Empire Total War back in year 2009. As you can see from the diagram, Warscape sit in the middle between the gameplay layer and your hardware. Warscape provide functionality to the gameplay layer to be able to uh, render and visualize the gameplay, as you can see, both battle and campaign. There's a lot of subsystem inside uh, Warscape. These range from something obvious that you can see on the screen, like large army unit, um, terrain rendering, lighting, post processing, to something like a bit more obscure from normal player like uh, GPU resource management and low level functionality like shader and texture. And of course, um, our VFX system is one of the subsystem, one big subsystem in the Warscape engine as well. So here, if you're interested in reading more about Warscape, I, should, I left the link below for you. So let's talk about VFX system. As we already know that VFX is actually one major subsystem that sit inside Warscape. But what is the main purpose of VFX? Um, as you can see from the picture, uh, we, our VFX system produce visual effects. 
and the main purpose is to enhance your gameplay experience, to increase, to make your gameplay experience complete with the highest visual fidelity as possible. And this has been done through various type of particle system. I hope you have some idea right now, but here I also have some video for you that gonna show how VFX work and uh, into the game to provide you a better experience. Thanks to our VFX art team for this video. So as you can see, in Total War, now you can kind of think of VFX it everywhere, right? Yes, because it's actually quite a big part of visual in, in terms of like, um, and it can drive emotion, can drive it's like a gameplay experience. And looking back, like when I first played Total War in Shogun Total War, we've been really, really long way um, in terms of our visual, especially VFX. It's like, but I still remember because Total War is actually one of the game that actually drive me into a game programming. And and because of, yeah, because of the gameplay, because of like, it's everything is amazing and looks stunning. So I'm kind of like a, have a little dream back in the day when I first playing the game that I would like to be part of the game industry. Um, and here we go. Uh, I'm kind of really proud that somehow I made it into the team and be part of one of my favorite game of all time. So in this section, let's talk about our design philosophy and what I have learned in terms of system design, um, being in this system for quite a while. So I would like to start with a question for you really. What do you think is the most important aspect when it comes to designing uh, the content creation system like VFX? Is it a rendering technique? Is it a latest technology? Or you think it's data-driven design, user readability? Well, these are all important and we're gonna talk about it. However, what I think is the most important thing is the system that can bring all people together. Why? Because Everyone has a good idea. And I think because if good ideas is kind of everywhere. So when you bring people together, it's not only programmer, game designer, artist, but also including everyone else that probably like walk past and also being part of the development process, like our QA, production, marketing, and even you from players from the community. So how can we um, so this, I think this is most important for system. However, bringing people together, it's easier said than done. We all know that game development is difficult. Game development process can be really emotionally taxing. So it's not difficult only technically, but also it's kind of heavy mentally sometimes. Um, I mean, I can say like sometimes, like a lot of time game development is really fun. Uh, when you get some new idea, you get your first prototype running and all the stuff, but sometimes really frustrating and make you angry. Sometimes you feel fearful, sometimes it gives you doubt, but also many times it's such a good, have a good surprise when you actually achieve something new and you've never seen it before. So I think because, because of this, the system, we need to make sure design that design a system that can help people supporting each other. Um, because we're not working alone and around WeFX system, around our WeFX system, there's many, many kind of uh, profession, I would say all kind of mind that we want to actually say, uh, work together. And these are focused on different things, right? So we had some people Focus on performance, like this sort of engine programmer or system programmer, VFX programmer. Um, we also have people who are actually interested in or actually have their eyes for visual, like those artists, um, cinematic art, VFX art. 
and also like some people are actually kind of like they really want the system to make sure they can it easy to understand easy to use um, like gameplay game designer so they can actually deliver some sort of game logic behind it also um, yeah production looking for time efficiency so we can deliver a thing at the quality we want um, QA representing player that also may look into like consistency of the system right so these all uh, we are all looking for a different thing and I think it's really important that we have this in mind when we bring people together um, these share a same common thread though so we have to make sure that the system that had the right mindset in there as we already talked about the goods idea so how we have how we can make the system that can capture good idea the key here is actually it the feel you have to you want to make everyone feel good when you actually uh, sit down and work on the system it could be quite pleased for the eyes could be quite like uh quite smooth to work on have um quite obvious to debug and test and also enjoy to play um this kind of uh, idea, I think it's the right mindset. This comes from uh, sort of like we uh, philosophies and stuff behind like um, the warm shower, right? You, you probably have heard that a lot of time our best idea come during the warm relaxing shower time. Why? Uh, because of when your body and mind are fully relaxed, your brain will be fully functional and then a lot of time the idea become clear. Um, and we also want to make sure like those idea has been captured at the time so we won't losing it as a system designer myself it's all about finding balance and something that's quite obvious in terms of um, when you look at the system is actually yes so as a programmer you want to balance between visual performance and the functionality so everyone is happy uh, but also when it's come to people, I would like to point out that um, we not only just have to be, be only technical knowledge alone, it's not enough. So we need to make sure we balance between having a good communication and also the time management. One thing that I could suggest, which it really, uh, I found that it's worked really well on me is um, if you want to design a system, find the right spot, it, it, you can start in yourself really like start finding a balance within a lot of time i think uh the thought of mindfulness practice and so uh, and and ancient philosophy become quite handy so yeah um maybe take a look outside uh, technical knowledge sometime looking for some sort of other type of knowledge that could help you find balance within yourself then you can spread this out so another analogy that I want to point out is when I'm actually working on or designing um, our VFX system, I also think about it as like a playground, like a sand pit. Um, a good c content creation for me is like a building a fun sand pit, really. So for everyone to enjoy, go in and create something and have fun. Um, and at the same time, also feel safe and feel really stable so we kind of like try to remove the fear and add openness into the system um, one important thing here as well I want to point out is in our VFX system it's yeah it's not all about the technical stuff it, it's a lot about like we have we, we have trust um, and openness for each other also like uh, we promote empathy and that hopefully that will bring everyone together, as I say. Here, uh, the next session, I would like to talk about our VFX rendering pipeline during uh, the last decade. In our, the reason of our VFX rendering pipeline development is basically, as I said in the last session, is to bring people idea into the game. Um, and Every iteration of our rendering pipeline was actually about bringing what we think is the best enhancement at the time, um, that what is the most benefit. So, as you will see, we're gonna start like.
talking you through um, about like from 10 years ago and you see how much change we did make and what kind of reason behind it. So let's start. Um, I would like to start this story when back in year 2011, this is around my time that I'm actually start working at CA. Um, the, the pre, this, at the time with the Rome 2, Total War Rome 2 is in development. And um, one thing that we want to really, really bring into the system is the more, more freedom and more flexible way of creating VFX or modify VFX behavior. Um, this is not possible before because largely our VFX are hard coded or actually only have a few uh, number of parameters at the time. And we think it's the time that we want to bring a more sort of like flexible and also like make it easier to use for a user, for our artists to be bring that good idea into the game. Um, here, we start at, we start working on VFX editor and this is what it looked like. Um, our VFX editor has, um, I think, the the time we bring our VFX editor into play, it's um it's pretty much like it's a beginning point of what I call uh, like uh, the the modern modern VFX um system in Total War. So um similar to our VFX rendering pipeline, this editor has been through many iterations through time as well. Um and the picture you see right now is actually our latest edition. Why I'm not going to go into detail about like um, our editor, but please feel free to let us know if you'd like to know more about the editor site itself, because it's actually a key, also one of the key elements that we use to uh, create our VFX. And let's go back to our pipeline. So from, this is what it looked like back in Rome 2 rendering pipeline. Um, because of we want to bring more flexibility, so we and also the um, hardware limitation at the time that we want to be based on the X9. So it it kind of like um, it makes sense to actually make the system that run largely on the CPU. Um, it means all the most of the operation, which is um, spawning new particles, simulating all the particle and make them animate, um, also sorting. It happened onto CPU, um, and the GPUs only take the take the job of rendering those particles, and this it work really well with the, our our first edition of VFX editor and easy to write, easy to maintain, quite easy to understand, uh, and it kind of enough for for ROM two, which is the requirement are not that big in terms of the number of particle. Um, But yeah, we do realize that we might need to react to it in our next game. Um, when it comes to the next game, Total War Attila, the main goal for this game is actually we want to be able to represent apocalyptic world, the scene full of um, burning fire, um, smoke everywhere, as, and we need a lot of particles to do that. That is when we realize that um, our CPU based system, it's probably not going to scale well. We start to see the, the frame rate drop here and there when we start doing our work in Attila. So what we like to do here would actually rethink the whole thing and just say like, okay, let's start again. Let's start, let, let's spend some time with it. Um, the, and that was when we decided to move largely most of the particle operation down to the GPU. So the so when this so, so this system is actually work the way where once the CPU has spawned a new particle, then everything will happen on the GPU. So as particles start to simulate on the GPU, also all the sorting process it's happened down to rendering. So um it means CPU has more free time to do other stuff and also like uh, GPU particles scale much better. Um, this is pretty much like uh, what we spend most of the time there. The, the downside of it for a little bit here where we have to cut back some of the flexibility and just because we need to make sure like um, all the particles are pretty much like rendered fast enough. Um, but 
yeah, we achieved to be able to render about 250,000 um, particles for Attila game, which is a really good number. And um, and be, because of the game doesn't require like a lot of variety of particles, so it's mostly fire and smoke. So it fit really well in the in the time, and we we do feel like the um, artists feel a little bit of restricted, but we kind of like okay, we it's too good enough for the game. Then uh, I think we kind of like think about that later. One of the highlight that I would like to point out here at the time of Attila is actually like um, we because of we don't want to actually um, do we don't want to move data back and forth in between CPU and GPU so it kind of makes sense to do um, even the co like sorting operation on the GPU and sorting is as you might know um, it really crucial step if you want to be able to draw uh, transparent object correctly so you need to be able to draw them from back to front. Um, uh, and this is where we actually implement the GPU global sort to be able to uh, do this operation. And it worked really well for us. Um, it is a quite a challenging task when I did at the time because again, like uh, in, we kind of have to implement this on pixel shader uh, because of um, we, we need to make sure like um, all their X10 GPU is uh, supported. Um, but yeah, it worked and I'm really proud of it. Um, so it, that was, we got in Attila. So now the, in year 2015, um, after Attila was released in 2014, the, we start thinking about um, what kind of new thing or what the best idea that we want to have in um, Warhammer game. So Warhammer game is going to be full of magic, as you know it, a lot of unique visual effects represent each faction. Um, we kind of really think that it was like, um, okay, so it's definitely the functionality that we have in the late, in, the, in, in, in Attila pipeline, probably not going to be enough. Um, we need to uh, pretty much upgrade it again um, to make sure it's actually supporting all these a new feature and the larger data set because it's going to be a lot a lot of vfx like um in attila is around like um pretty much 50 different vfx and we see in warhammer is definitely we need more like thousand so um so we decide to upgrade it making a big upgrade here in all operations still on gpu as you see which is um because GPU is fast, it support it, 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 it's still doing what we do really well. And the evolution of the GPU at that time is really quick. Um, they, we here, but instead of using a pixel shader to do a particle operation, we move everything into a more modern compute shader. And this compute shader, I was just gonna refer it as a shader model, a shader model five GPU based system. It, it allow us to bring a lot of new feature into the system including yeah be able to support larger data set um, which it allow us to make larger variety of vfx um, we a little bit concerned about like number the the size of our uber shaders getting really big um, but anyway it's work on warhammer and this is what it looked like in terms of data flow so we move data from the cpu um, once the the game send the uh, send the data that they want to be able to see particle system then we start to pass this data on down, down to the GPU and then do simulation do some animation and um, of course like global sorting and then draw we also yeah using like um, um, the feature in the DirectX 11 which is draw indirect so it's mean you, your CPU doesn't have to know about how many objects that you want to draw. So all of this has been issued by GPU. So it, it's really, really fast and it's really um, volatile and really, um, uh, it's really smooth process really. So compute shader based pipeline, as you can see, brought many features for us. Um, we improve the improvement of the global sort. We use draw indirect. Um, we, all, we can support more different type of um, particle, not only like, uh, 
for camera facing, but we also moving other type like point light and decal. We also support um, more interesting uh, way of particle stimulation, which is like vector field or some other stuff. Um, we add more advanced animation, um, and yeah, we also do some all the trick to make sure like the at the time uh, Warhammer look the best. Um, yeah, in my opinion, I think Warhammer VFX is it's pretty awesome, really. I like this pipeline, and I think it's a good base uh, for us to move on into the next step as well. As as much as I think at the time it was like, okay, what else I can we can do? I mean, it's really really good, right? It's, it's everything is work. We support latest data, but um, we'll see. So the next game, uh, yeah. So we had next game. We come back to the historical setting, so that you can see. Uh, Usually, history code setting doesn't need to have a large variety of VFX. So we go back to the setup of fire and smoke, but then we start to think, um, what make, uh, how can we make it look better, and what is the problem at the time? So um, while Warhammer have all these varieties and flashy and look amazing VFX, we kind of realized something like from the community that start to like have to see this meme of um, the low resolution arrow trail and we kind of start to come back and think about it, it was like why uh, we cannot render this object at the at the uh, make it look sharper make it look nicer um, what is the limitation in our current pipeline and Pretty much like uh, I would like to say it's pretty much because of the way we draw them and um, using global sword and uber shader. The problem with that is um, we cannot choose what is if basically everything have to be drawing together because we, we, we want it to be fast. And um, so all the smoke, fire, uh, aloe trail, and even all of these need might need a different resolution um, to be able to represent the sharpness, the softness. It is not possible at the time. Um, and this is the classic problem of the traditional alpha blending because we need a sort. And once you sort them, you don't want to break the the sort order because it will affect performance. And um, so at the time we kind of like, okay, it's the um, because we have a global source, we have to draw everything together. Um, but that is, that, that's like a big struggle, right? So like, how, how can we actually break this and also like still make it run, still make it efficient enough for our game? Um, we have to rethink it, like pretty much flip my head around. But uh, here is the, what we come up with in um, as a VFX pilot in, in in Total War Three Kingdoms, um, we start these. We we kind of like completely remove the need of a uh, global sort. The reason for that is because we go into the direction of um, we want to use OIT technique for our new system. OIT is stand for order independent transparency, which it means uh, when you draw a transparent object, you don't have to pretty much draw into order, and there's a lot of um, paper around this area and many, many OT technique. But um, so after a number of research, after spend a lot of time, we kind of like come down that we, we found that uh, the technique that we love to use and we love to present to you today is called moment-based OIT. So what is moment-based OIT? Just, just, um, moment-based OIT is one of the OIT's, uh, OIT technique that is actually based on signal reconstruction. Um, and it's pretty much like generate the the visibility of the color contribution of that particular pixel um, without without uh, need to be draw in order. So uh, when I found this technique was actually these the it's these two pictures that actually convinced me that it probably fit nicely in our game. Um, this is largely because of well the the picture show fire and smoke and it say like oh it's work it work it work properly it can work in this situation so uh, even before i start looking into the mathematical um function or mathematical formula i i, I already like feel have a good feeling of, of this that might work for us um and it is uh so it work 
um, how it work, how, how much, I'm not going to go into the mathematical detail here, but I would just like, like to share a little bit of this. But usually when you draw an, an object and then turn into a pixel, then you store what usually what you store in the, in the pixel is color, right? So then you store color and it's something come into front of that pixel, then you replace that color with that color. That's a normal pipeline. Um, you can't really do that correctly uh, because the all of the pick because in when you draw a transparency object everything contributes to the final color so it's like every layer is matter and also like every layer is matter it need to be drawn in the correct order because of the blending equation as you've seen before um, OIT is actually instead of storing color alone we also store a history of all of these um, transparency object so we know the, how much visibility it is contribute to the final scene as we see on the screen. Um, I would like to show a little bit more in detail here. So this is what it looked like uh, when we actually draw fire and smoke in MBOT. So we start with the, the background. Um, that's like uh, pretty much all the opaque object that draw into that from the um, different part of the pipeline. And then um, we start drawing particle into the scene, but instead of drawing particle color directly, we the first part it actually like we build up that visibility function through a moment function, which is this um, moment generation and moment, and then we combine all of these together to get the full picture of the like for each particle will generate the different visibility function, and then we combine them to get. The, the full picture of how much uh, visibility for these for each particle and this it actually happened um, in our order that was the amazing part about this technique um, so then here the once we know that information then each of these uh, we start drawing particle again having a uh, drawing color and let and, and, and then start to uh, calculate the color contribution then um, we should this 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 step we call moment reconstruction so reconstruction each color for each particle and then combine with the final scene to get the correct answer um while it look like it work amazing which it, it is true uh oit mat is difficult and i would actually say like it's a lot of difficulty along the way so we did a lot of experiment um with the uh, with different technique um, also before MBOT, as you can see, we a lot of failure along the way. Um, like some of the time, sometimes you see it fire actually bright through the dark smoke, um, dark hard edge, and sometimes it doesn't work. Color bleeding, all this stuff. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of difficulty, but we we, we get it to work. Um, and it's yeah, so it's definitely an interesting technique, and I love to promote this for everyone to try as much as it can be tricky in some situation um, and but at the end it worked and it worked well with uh, our rest of the system as well so here I would like to shout out to my friend Christoph Peter who originally wrote, um, wrote the paper of MBOIT so thank Christoph for your help um, really appreciate it it's a lot of a lot of question and answer that I know I did with you um, so here, this is the end result that I would like to show. Um, compared to the traditional alpha blending on the right side, MBOIT create almost no different here. Um, and here, the scene, the same scene from the game, um, which is have a lot of particle. Uh, which is different, really have a really different um, characteristic. So dense smoke, um, bright fire, and also like some emissive lantern behind. So they all work seamlessly together. Really, really well done. And I'm really pleased about this um, system. In terms of performance, uh, as much as MBOT asks us to actually um, render into uh, in into in to spend time to generate moment um so it's mean we have to render particle twice but at the end we are, it's actually a win because of we can remove the whole um sorting um 
cheddar from our pipeline and it actually allows us to actually open much more of the um, doing with the, with the uh, be able to improve visual qualities and stuff so yeah so we um, we got the chopper trail um, we got the chopper and crips looking fire and amber while keeping the smoke soft and that is a summary of our um, we affect high life of total war tree kingdom i hope uh, now you kind of agree with me that we've been through a lot of change and and how we actually um, kind of like think about how to bring the best idea to enhance the game step by step for each iteration of total war game and that will bring us to our last section which is um what we doing now so in year 2000 21 uh, the new decade how um what's the total war we effects look like and and what we want to move forward from here i would like to start this session with my favorite quote from the dalai lama which is do not try to use what you learn from buddhism to be the buddhist but use it to be a better whatever you already are this actually um touched me in many levels was personal and work level so personally i think like yeah um to be able to um, improve we have to learn from what we actually see and we kind of like learn from everything so we don't really look at it in particularly we effects or not um it just like everything around us um and once you also like um improving using the knowledge of what I learned to improve VFX system, but also using the knowledge that we actually using to improve VFX system to improve uh, myself at personal level as well. So um, here this was it look like, is it our current state of the VFX pipeline? Um, it largely based on our previous iteration, which is using MBOIT technique. So we call it MBOIT plus um, to, to we kind of the reason for this is clear is like it produce a good result it gives us a lot of flexibility as we already talked about like um i think this system it kind of like it's a nice foundation that we want to move forward it had the right mindset in that um it fixed a lot of the problem that we have throughout that 10 year of development it gives us good flexibility good visual good performance hardware friendly um, as you can see, we did talk about the problem with the, um, the sharpness of the arrows that now can be mixed nicely with the softness of the smoke. And we've kind of excited, like, how can we actually push this further? How can we actually give more freedom? Um, and, and kind of like what kind of attention we could bring to that. But before we go that, so just like take a look at what we've been doing in the system, kind of like a system design again. So um, our philosophies is the same. I think actually I learned much more to actually build upon that as well. So I'm still finding balance and the job is still the same, which is like um, balancing technical side. But now, we also like serviced more project so now we had like um we had to make sure like the quality of dlc and other future project will actually um be able to improve and then and and work at the timely manner now we had a bigger team make sure that communication actually sm smoother and smarter and actually build the idea of trust and all the thing up also, uh, largely like because of the last year um, situation, now a lot of us start to work from home and that's actually the first time in the CA history as well. So it is quite interesting that to, to be able to balance that, um, to be able to uh, think about people in terms of how, if we, how do we connect to each other when we not see each other. And that um, I think it's, uh, it's a lot to learn, it's a lot to see. To move forward so um now total war we system it for me it's turned into a bigger sand pit but it's a much better and 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 have more potential to create a lot of cool stuff uh much more than before so while we still keep our own philosophy um and and want to we should creativity trust um openness and empathy uh i think uh I also want to actually emphasize that the bit that we 
also um, make sure like uh, we embrace are the good quality as well, like compassion, loving kindness, especially when we not work together, as I said. So, and we had a bigger team, different personality. Um, game development still hard, and it's it's still gonna keep being hard and difficult. But because of the resolve, it was so fascinating and 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 it's a good idea, um, make you feel really good. So that's why I want to push it forward. Um, so in the sense of how we bring that into like see into the system in the future so we kind of um from we effects editor now we also like involve other advanced tooling so we allow um our we effect art um, team can can create better content uh, more freedom and not only that other side of the of the spectrum we also want to provide and keep providing this is actually also something i didn't show much but uh, we we keep developing our debug tools um, to be able to quicker give more information regarding to performance to be able to do a bug fixing and and make everyone work um everyone around the reflex system as you already seen like be happy and um and and feel good about it well technical wise we put thing forward as well which is like always like we want to see uh, better realistic or actually something like fit better in the game so we see something that we could improve improve like lighting and shadow um, we also want to push the idea of MBOIT um, forward like uh, we did talk about uh, we blend the object from the different sort of like a softness with the sharpness and all this stuff. We also think, oh, we could do further and try to actually um, create a blending between uh, maybe pre-tone mapping and post-tone mapping. So we may we, we could use this in term of different application like for our UI. And, and now we can actually see that it had a lot of potential and we could expand um, our this technique to be used outside VFX um, as well and to create like more kind of like a, a complete blending solution for the game. We're also working on improving particle management. This is also like to the fact that we probably want to see more particle in the game at some point. So we want to actually make sure like all the pipeline are actually like um, improving and, and, and we did uh, kind of like went into some sort of experiment and come up with some good idea about how we can classify a particle really quickly on the GPU, um, which I kind of like roughly show, as, show here on the screen right now. Um, and we also looking for um, into using a different sort of like how we can use your existing hardware more um, efficiently as well like kind of like we're thinking about um, using the, the idea of multiple uh, GPU but instead of you have to have the, the card like your same two card like we used to do uh, we're thinking about like maybe we could use some new feature that be able to use like your onboard GPU to do some work for VFX system. And uh, and that is just like the tip of the iceberg that I would like to actually show. There's a lot of thing in our mind, the backlog uh, that we want to do and we want to research into to kind of improve our game and um, and bring what we have, uh, the idea and what we kind of have in our mind into reality to share with you. On that note, if you're passionate about VFX development, um, looking of job or you have some cool paper that you like to share with me or like to work, like to collaborate with us, um, please give us a contact. Here's the contact, here's my contact. Um, also, like if you're interested in uh, what I've been doing outside work, uh, like I love Game Jam and I do travel and do other stuff. So um, it, I think this is actually all come I learn from those activity as much as I learn in front of um, computer reading technical paper as well. Here we go. So here's my contact. And yeah, if you're interested in keep in touch, um, I would love to hear from you as well. So I would just want to say thank you. And yeah, see you on the next battlefield.
Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the talk. So now I'm going to answer some common question that we got about our VFX system. And here joining me uh, is Ellie. Hi. Uh, so my name is Ellie Corlander Lester. I'm the lead VFX artist on our Fantasy Toast War titles at the moment. So yeah, here to yeah. answer some of your questions. I'm glad to have Ellie here. Ellie's been in the system for a long time and like also like we've been working together. So she's definitely gonna be like the best person to be able to pretty much roasting or like give some nice insight for, for more information about the system. Um, so yeah, let's let get started. So there's a, there's a question about um, innovation. So, so who usually come up with innovation and how how this be, how's good idea turn into reality? So I think I could I could start. Um, and as I said already, I think the uh, the idea was actually come from pretty much like what to talk about who come come up with innovation. I think it's come from every single direction. Uh, we usually work as a team. So um, in the I think in the presentation you already saying was it like it's not only artists and programmer. As much as you've seen art in the game or kind of logic that come from programming, but I think the uh, it's it kind of it's everyone really. So it's everyone like from from the idea from the from the game designer itself and also like the all the collection of the data from marketing and all the QA. So we, we all turn this into sort of like a, um, what is supposed to be best for the next one in terms of um, uh, visual, which is going to go down to uh, VFX art and they're going to crunch all these data and get what best out of it. And then in terms of um, technical detail from the programming side, so come down to like what best for the machine and how can we balance this stuff. So, and then, yes, and then we kind of sit together. So the, that that's why I've, I kind of really think openness and the connection um, in our team are the most important to be able to take this into reality. So there's no one in particular. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree that. So sometimes yeah. it's a, a design feature and, and how we implement it from VFX needs to be kind of rethought. And if it's something that ends up being requiring a lot of visuals, then maybe we need to think about uh, game code as well or or graphics code and how to make that more efficient. So it's it stems from a lot of things. Sometimes it's just a design element and, and sometimes it's artists wanting to be able to render things better. Sometimes it's graphics code and they're like, well, actually, we can do this more efficiently and, and we need to innovate from that level. So there's a, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of parties involved in in, in how it develops and how do we prioritize those? We, we literally just sit down uh, representatives from each team, put our case forward as what is gonna, you know, get us the best results or, or make such a dramatic difference with how, how we work. And, and we kind of prioritize it based on that. And obviously um, how how much the, uh, the cost of actually uh, doing a particular feature, if it's quite a meaty thing, um, then then maybe it's a little bit lower down the list from things that are, that are maybe a bit more quick fixes. So. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, collaboration, like I said, with the... I guess, like, teams. for example, you can actually think about, like, one magic from Warhammer, right? It's not really something, like, we one of us come up with the idea. It's more like, uh, okay, this is, this some this feature, with this magic or this faction has actually really been requested by a player or our, um, uh, or our community. And then that going through, like, uh, that going through marketing and then game design and then all approved it by our partner, and then um, Ellie probably um, the VFX art and actually got all these idea and bring it together. And at the same time, on the technical side, we provide like yeah, we we might need a number of certain particle that we need to be able to represent our feature. Then it work, and then also at the same time, it cannot be it need to run smoothly. So these things go go back and forth between quality control, and and that's it. That's that pretty much like um <laughs> so. Uh, so I think that we're good on that. Um, let's come to the next question. So I think we did answer this. So when we're working on VFX, how much the balancing acts that have to be done between the amount of particle and especially when you actually have so many characters. So it's a really big battle in total war. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of balancing. I mean, we've, we've been working uh, in total war, especially with, with 
uh, Warhammer for a while now, but we've had to um, learn on on a project basis how you know how detailed a particular effect needs to be. Like we're, we're quite used to making sure that all animation and uh, VFX or characters have to be really efficient because there's so many units, right? So um, we're, we're used to a kind of template as to as to what we need to to set with parameters for those. Um, same thing with bigger effects. You know, if we've we've made a really fancy I, spell. I also can... would like to hear this, Emily. Yeah. So it's basically like, what is change throughout time? Because like, yeah, it's been a VFX editor. It's been in the system for about 10 years now. So um, how much actually change in terms of what helping you or what sort of design change or what we, we need to do a lot of balancing acts, right? Between like, we show sure. and performance and other stuff. So what what it changed from the very beginning to what we have now? Right, I remember actually because I mean we won't the, Warhammer being our first fantasy title, we didn't have VFX all over our battle maps, and I remember we did put VFX everywhere. I remember these little candles that were on uh, vampire maps, and we put little flames on each of the candles. But we put it in a model, <laughs> and environment artists put these models everywhere, and we ended up with thousands of these little vfx and i remember i coming up to me and saying how have we got so many vfx on a map all of a sudden it's just this is crazy we can't render all of these uh which mean we had to not not change how we put them around the maps or how we how we decorate them but actually there was a lot of balancing then from graphic side i could say okay if, if there's too many of these entities we need to make sure we're efficient about them so that was kind of our approach in the early stages. And I think from from that uh, up to the present now, there's a, a lot less restrictions on that where we're, we've been able to develop our engine to, to allow a lot of artists a lot more flexibility. So, um, I mean, Ike always says to me now, he's like, we don't want to restrict you on what you're doing. It's, it's just, you know, we want you to be creative. Just bear in mind this, this and this. And and we maybe we can work on giving you more flexibility in the future. So the flexibility for artists has definitely got you know it's definitely expanded um throughout the whole project and and we have a lot more freedom um to, to yeah. live up to the vision that we we're, we're hoping to, to create I'm kind, of, I'm kind of glad to hear that because i learned a lot from being in the system as well which is like i was i was starting being in the system like a like a basically engineer just engineer and then just think about in terms of only engineering so it's Pretty much, I would say, like, I got this resource, limited this, limiting that, and then see, like, what is going to go in the game. So a lot less, uh, when I when I start working on it, there's a lot less collaboration coming to my mind. But uh, but throughout time, that's when I start to build this idea was the collaboration was the most amazing, it's the most important thing for us because that that how we can actually, yeah, like, like um, as Ellie said, it was like, we we start off just like, okay, we if we can't, uh, we we had to we have enough tools to be able to maybe like yeah place a thousand candle, but then also like but maybe if we need more, or we actually need to be able to remove some. How can we actually develop tools to actually um, also the system that be able to help? I think one thing that I would like to mention here is um, what make Total War game is different than other game in terms of we, we this day right you see. Uh, it's kind of like there's a lot of um, games that have beautiful graphic and all other stuff. So what what can make Total War was actually still stand out. And and one thing that I would like to mention is probably the personality. It's like and 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 personality. This mean was like uh, um, it what mean freedom, creative freedom from the from the art point of view. Um, because of I think I think that's it. Was like in when if we if we if we kind of if the tools or the system had a lot of friction point uh, when the content creator going to create and maybe al not allow them to have completely um, freedom is an interesting word. I think it's more like a not having fear to be in the system, like really like be able to trust and and be confident to using the system. Then it can we so so pretty much like we could allow the team to unleash more of their creative freedom. And creative freedom, that also means personality, I think, because I learned through time that each of us actually had so much different personality and when we blend together. And I think what makes Total War unique, it's also related to how much we actually allow everyone in the team to unleash their personal, to, to, to unleash their personal idea into the, into the game through the system. Um, yeah, maybe Ellie can add something more into that. Yeah, um, 
yeah, I think that's right. That it feels like that we've we've yeah we've definitely got to that point where we can feel um, there is not it's not restrictions as such, but because we've got this creative flow now between the teams, it's like if we come up with any anything we want to address or, or try something new, that there's that free flowing conversation between both the teams. It's like okay, like, how do we do this? It's not no, it's never no. It's like when can we do this and how do we do it? So um, I think that is, is is definitely amazing to be able to you know be part of. It's 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 a free flowing conversation that that's always continuing. Yeah, and, and, and I remember very- this in the past. It's a lot more limitation. So it's kind of like uh, if you all you might remember there's an old article about like engineers always say no and. It, it's a, it's sort of it's really um, stigma that we want to actually remove at least in our VFX team. So it's like we we kind of like we can't always say yes, but we always say what can we help. I think that's more like, and then everyone said what can we help. Then something I think that that's how we can find balance at the end. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit more technical side, Ellie, because we after we went after Weimar two. We really happy with the with the with the pipeline. I remember it. Like we 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 introduced a lot of good stuff in there, and it's first time we had magic in the game. We can do so many type of different V effect. And then uh, when we do when we working on three kingdoms and 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 uh, and then basically like we move toward the new completely new foundation, which is the OIT system. So I wonder is like what your reaction and what your experience so far. And and because we did talk about like kind of like this is what the the foundation that we can build more into it like we can more be to to be able to unlock the idea of like we don't have to draw them all together anymore and each part and and then we can we can bring more customizable into our particle system. Um, so but yeah, from from your perspective, like what is the <laughs> well, it's it's something that it, it's like a a problem that gets erased. So I remember on on Warhammer two, yeah, we had. We had really good a really good standard of of our VFX and, and our system, but then there was there was this one nagging thing that we'd always get issues with, which was yeah the sorting of meshes and particles and and you'd get all these restrictions of uh, unwanted effects and we were just the trail well, lots, right that, that's lots, the trail yeah. that's really blurry. L- lots of systems have it, you know, it's it's just there. But w- once that just went, I've forgotten about it. But it, everything just looks so much better now. Um, <laughs> there is some. There are still some things that we have to be aware of. I remember, like when, when we've got really bright particles and really dark particles, and lots of emitters on top of each other. We can still get, you know, some artifacts that I think, yeah, that that can uh, that need improvement, or we just need to be a lot more aware of that because it works in a different way. But in general, I mean, it, it's just erased so many bugs. We used to, visual bugs we used to get because things didn't look quite right, and and that is another, you know, expanding creativity again. That things looking. How you expect it to look, and, and and as you know, as an artist would would want it to, rather than than you know, having some kind of graphical glitches like that. There was there, there was a little bit of yeah, the, the, well, it's just improved it so yeah. So I think like we do we do have some technical term that we yeah. we have to kind of like um it we we have to like kind of like get get the common understanding. But but I think in in general, I hope is the. Like it doesn't change much in terms of how you think about creative, like when when you go into your creative um creative mode. I would just say like when the work work throughout. But um, it kind of it kind of funny, isn't it? That was actually like we we the we kind of like uh, he take that point where we just like oh yeah everything's so blurry. Then how can we fix those? How can we fix these things that turn into a meme? Um, and and that was sparking that that's a little thing that sparked the whole thing. What can we do better? Yeah. Um, I think in thing in in Tree Kingdom we had quite a privilege, uh, privilege really to actually uh, think about this problem again because of uh, in Warhammer we had a lot of data with a lot of different type of VFX. So when we move into Tree Kingdom we kind of like we we can focus because we had less. I think we had a lot. We let we have a less uh, yeah less, it's smaller definitely- set easier to implement such large graphical changes when you're stripped back to a beginning of a project and you can start creating your assets with that in mind so i think that's the difference between you know adapting things for 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 a long-running project like warhammer we have to be quite careful about how we implement stuff but it is quite nice to be able to do 
big graphic yeah to do it from the blank page isn't it and then Um, i think be considerate of the art you're making when you when you when you've got that that new tech in mind so yeah so when we when we move i think one thing that when we we learn that we we move from when we move something in like to the foundation level we need to make sure like everything works consistently so it's basically like every single piece of data had to be able to upgrade or resave or be able to do qa check to make sure like everything still have the same look and i think that also part of what we grow together as well we we care a lot more about quality of life and 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 we introduce this not only the tools for feature but also we need a debug tools we need we need um consistency check to like integrity uh yeah like to be able to integrate all of the all the features safely and i think yeah also like safety we, because we did talk about like the um uh, we affect system a team as a as a whole playground thing i, I wonder say what you what you think about it but i hope you agree that how i, I see them how I see all you as well not um, like as a kid but like <laughs> A fun playground. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's. I, I think it's the best job in the industry. But there we go. Um, it's a fun playground working in VFX. Um, uh, and I'm excited about the future. You know, um, we're gonna have to change how 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 we work a little bit. I think we've got unrunning projects all the time. A lot of content to have to manage. So our focus recently has definitely moved into to how to be more efficient in maintaining all of all of, of that those existing effects but yeah the focus yeah, is changing from you know from from how to to the, how we work and 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 definitely all our quality of life stuff is, is definitely shaping around tools to help us manage all of that as well um but it's so, yeah so sorry. like um so when if also we have a bigger team now but we're still looking right so it's like for for people who would like to actually join us or start um looking to like we affects um so uh yeah i mean maybe you can share how you get into the this yeah um, this area or how and what what people should well there's no there's no right do. way there's no wrong way <laughs> there's a lot of options to get into into the vfx and games uh i myself did, did a film related um visual effects wow. course actually so yeah that was my i did a degree and then uh did work in the film industry for a little while and and came on to into games through uh, working as a cinematic artist. So I used to make sort of trailers and, and stuff for the games to start off with. So I, yeah, I've, I've evolved uh, throughout the company for a little while, but it's, a generalist background is actually really useful for VFX because we work directly with so many different departments. We're working with environment art for all the environment VFX. We work with, with animation and, and characters and, and because there's so much overlap all the time, having a knowledge of all those other areas really helps you be a stronger artist because you can be more considerate of their pipelines and how they work. Um, so even being a, a general 3D artist, uh, if the effects interest you, that's 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 a good place to start as well. Um, but yeah, so we've got a, quite a few people that come from different backgrounds in VFX. As a you know, as a, someone that's coming from. Uh, maybe a degree or maybe considering you know should they take a degree um i wouldn't say there's right or wrong with that either there's plenty of resources out there for people who who can't you know don't don't want to stretch to 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 maybe three or four years of education um there's some really good master's courses that are a bit more condensed for a year there's there's online courses such as um uh, jason kaiser's done um a vfx apprentice course which is really good um but that if, if you're able to kind of get your hands on an engine, something that's 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 free to use, like uh, like Unreal or, or something like that, uh, you can then just start to develop your skills by just practicing uh, techniques. And, and there's lots of resources online as well. As, uh, and then if we don't have the feature, you can request it. Right? Yeah, that's real, time, real time VFX <laughs> is another one. Yeah, but there's there's yeah there's loads of um, resources for self-learning as well so it's not it's not all about um degrees as well it's um it's just if you've got the desire to to to, to yeah work exactly VFX, i'm about know. to say the same like it's i yeah. think the most important thing is pretty much like start with passion mm. if you know really you really want to like if these top if these like area interest you because we effects are really really um kind of like it's broad right it can so many things so i think first thing that you probably have if you're new to the um, to the industry, uh, your passion probably the best. Use the passion to actually build up that portfolio and come in. And um, and if, but if you talk about like a little bit more um, 
senior. So when you actually, so when you when you want to apply for something like more senior level, I would just say like not only a passion, but you also should be you should be able to be a good example for the team. So so yeah, so for the junior people, then you probably yeah your passion and then you have a lot of energies to actually contribute to that particular topic and work. Um, be happy in the world, be positive. Then, then when you're more senior, then yeah, we start looking for something, someone who actually can be a good example in in that area. Can also can like then these good example go into many many way: communication, empathy, compassion. Like you can you need to be able to work with the team and and be able to yeah like um showing that you actually um can yeah bring bring a bring a good atmosphere to yeah. overall and yeah. improve that as well and can help to actually see what direction they want to go for. So that is even more um, senior or lead. So yeah, that's it. So yeah. senior level where you're influencing like everyone else, like <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the, the, the real roadmap of, you know, where the visual should be. That's, that's, that's what we expect from seniors. So um, yeah. driving the I way. I think we, we like run out of time isn't it, here. So it was so much fun to usually like have a chat with you, like, with the system we just have so many things that we want to share with you but uh we're going to stop here right now but if you have more questions feel free to pose and and maybe we'll come back in the future in more um in more focus in in any direction that you request here i would like to thanks everyone for joining me today and thank you for watching this bafta game live stream from creative assembly make sure you watch this space for future tutorial bye